There's none like you, Adonai. There's nothing like your deeds. God, you rule eternally. Your kingdom lasts for all generations. Adonai rules. Adonai rules. Adonai will rule forever and ever. Adonai will give strength to God's people. Adonai will bless God's people with peace. Merciful Father, favor signs of your goodness. Reveal the walls of Jerusalem. For we trust only you, ruler God on high, sovereign of worlds. Whenever the ark would travel, Moses would say, Arise, Adonai, and scatter your enemies. May those that hate you flee from you. For Torah shall come from Zion, the word of Adonai for Jerusalem. Blessed is the one who in holiness gave the Torah to Israel. Page 101. Praise be the name of the sovereign of the universe. Praise be your crown and your place. May your love for your people Israel last forever. And may the salvation of your right hand be revealed to your people in your holy house. Grant us the goodness of your light and accept our prayer with mercy. May it be your will that we be granted a long good life and may I be counted among the righteous so that you will never, so you will have mercy on me and protect me in all that is mine and all that belongs to your people Israel. You are the one who nourishes all and sustains all. You rule over all. You are the one who rules over earthly rulers and sovereignty is yours. I'm a servant of the Blessed Holy One. I bow before God, before the honor of God's Torah at all times. And you and your trust in the Lord, the angel, which is God of heaven. This is true God, the Torah is true, the prophets are true, and holds my seeds like this is true. In God who I trust, I have found holy heart in me, I speak praises. And if you will, you shall be in my heart before God, and you will be in me and serve my heart's desires, listen to Israel, it's good for life and peace. Amen. Shema Israel, Adonai Elokeinu, Adonai Echad. Shema Israel, Adonai Elokeinu, Adonai Echad. Elokeinu, Gadol, Adonai Nu, Kedosh Shemo. Echad, Elokeinu, Gadol, Adonai Nu, Kedosh Shemo. Yadul Adonai Yitim, Shemo Yadav, Shemo Yadav. Lahadam Raglav Kadoshu, Romu, Romu, Adonai Elohim, they knew, they stuck a boo, they stuck a boo, Lahadam Raglav Kadoshu, Romu, Romu, Adonai Elohim, they knew, they stuck a boo, they st
Ki Kadosh Adonai Eloheinu. Go ahead and help me undress it here. Just take out the pieces, yeah. So. Rahmu Adonai Eloheinu, Vishakadu, Ahar Pachaho. Rahmu Adonai Eloheinu, Vishakadu, Lahar Kachaho. Ki, 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 ki Kadosh Adonai Eloheinu, Rahmu. Ki kadosh Adonai Eloheinu Rabbi Ki 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 I realized I was going to have a hard time doing that because I was singing as I invited you to come up and address the Torah school, but thank you. Uh, <laughs> All right, at this point in the service, we like to invite the children to come up and look at the Sefer Torah. And as a reward, we give them honey. You can be seated. Eli, I feel like it's been a while since I've seen you, man. How's it going? Yep. All right. So what do we call this book? The Bible. Does anyone else know what else we call it? The Torah. The Torah. Right? Mm -hmm. Okay, who wrote the Torah? God. God? Don't point at me. I did not write this Torah scroll, nor any Torah scroll, not yet. I would love to be a scribe. That sounds like a fun job. Um, yes. Um, God wrote the Torah scroll. Mm -hmm. Does anyone else know who else helped write the Torah scroll? No. Moses. Moses. Very good. And for the rest of us, there's a name we give Moses. There's a title, a special title. Does anyone know that one? Babai. I heard Tammy say it. Babai? Babai? No? Tammy, I heard you say it. Rabbeinu. Moshe Rabbeinu, which means Moses, our teacher. And sometimes... I'll assign title, we, we assign titles like this to other people as well. We might say someone is of a blessed memory, or we might say they're a hasadik, or we, we might assign titles. But Moshe, he is Rabbeinu, he is our teacher. And so I'm going to give you one honey stick, Kayla, to give to your son. I'm going to give you another one to give to your son. Does, does she want a honey stick? Do you want her to have a honey stick? Then let's not give her one. Okay. Um, sounds like a good deal. Okay, and there is one word we usually give it to the people who came up to see the sefer, but that's okay. We'll give your other son one anyway. Let me ask you this: Why do we give out honey? We always quote a verse when we do this. Mm -hmm. The words of Hashem are sweet like honey. So say it with me: The words of Hashem are sweet like honey, and we remember that here, and that's why we take the reading of scripture so seriously. You can be seated. Um, and good seeing you all again. Give me one moment. All right. The cutest part of the service, right? I think we'll see Jan's on here tonight, I hope. Um, may he help shield and save all who seek refuge in him. And let's say amen. Oh, As there's no Cohen, arise. Um, uh, let's say, arise, Gabriel, then angel. Blessed is he who in his holiness gave the Torah to his people in Israel. Uh, just touch it. I'll, I'll say one thing. I touch it with your sister. Is it page 104? Yes. Baruch the Baruch the Baruch Baruch the Baruch 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 Zerka, Zerka, Fayotse, 
There's some confusion up here just with the uh, general structure and flow of things today. Uh, actually, where are my notes? That's embarrassing. Uh, oh, here it is. It's Deuteronomy. We're in Devarim, chapter 14, verses, starting in verse 22. You can go there now. We have bat Bibles scattered throughout. Deuteronomy 14, 22. Every year you must take one tenth of everything you see, uh, your seed furnaces and in the field, and eat in the presence of Adonai your God, in the place where he chooses to have his name will live, you will eat it. the tenth of your grain, new wine and olive oil, and the first and the firstborn of your cattle and sheep, so that you will learn to fear Adonai your God always. But in the but if distance it is too great for you so that you are unable to transport it because the place where Adonai chooses to name is too far away from you, then when Adonai you gotta prosper you, you are to convert it into money. Then uh, take the money with you, go to the place with which Adonai you gotta will choose and exchange the money for anything you want, cattle, sheep, wine, all your intoxicating liquor or anything you please. And you are to eat there in the presence of other night you got to enjoy yourselves, you and your household. But don't neglect the le levy to stay, to stay with you because he has no share or inheritance like yours. At the end of every three years, you are to take all the tents of your cars from that year and store it in your Town. Then the levy, uh, then the levy, because he has no share of her inheritance like yours, along with the foreigner, the orphan, and the widow living in your towns, will come eat and, and be satisfied. So that Adonai, your God, will, will bless you in everything your hands produce. Baruch, um, May he bless she uh, may he who bless our fathers Abraham, Yitzhak, and Yaakov, bless Gabriel of an angel, who has been called up in honor of the all present, in honor of the Torah, in honor of the Shabbat. As a reward for this, may the Holy Blessed One, the Holy One, blessed be He, protect and deliver him from all troubles and distress, all infections and illness. And send blessings and success to all the work of his hands, together with all of you, Israel, his brethren, and let's say amen. Amen. All right, the next portion comes from uh, chapter 15, starting in verse 1. Right. Yes, we're just going to keep on reading through. At the, end, at the end of every seven years, you are to have a Shemitah. Here is how the Shemitah is to be done. Every uh, creditor is to, be, is to give up what he has loaned to his fellow members of the community. He is not to force his neighbor or relative to repay it. Because Adonai's time of remission has been proclaimed, you may repay it because Adonai's, oh, I'm sorry, uh, you may demand that a foreigner repay his debt, but you are not 
but you are to release your claim on whatever your brother owes you. In spite of this, there will be no one uh, needy among you, because Adonai will certainly bless you in the land which Adonai, your God, is giving you in, uh, as an inheritance to possess. If only you will listen carefully to what Adonai, your God, says and take care to obey these mitzvot, I am giving you today. Yes, Adonai, your God, will bless you he, as he promised you. You will lend money to many nations without having to borrow, and you will rule over many nations without their ruling over you. All right. Uh, chapter 15, starting in verse 19. All the firstborn males in your herd of cattle and in your flocks you are to set aside for Adonai your God. You are not to do any work with a firstborn from your herd or shear a firstborn sheep. Each year you and your household are to eat it in the presence of Adonai your God in the place which Adonai will choose. But if it has a defect, is lame or blind, or has some other kind of fault, you are not to sacrifice it to Adonai your God. Rather, eat it on your own property. The clean and the unclean alike may eat it, like the gazelle or the deer. Just don't eat its blood, but pour it out on the ground like water. 16, verses 1 through 3. <coughs> During the month of Aved, Aviv, and keep Pesach and your another God, your God. During the month of Aviv, Adonai, your God, brought you out of Egypt that night. You are to sacrifice the Pesach offering for the flock and the hearse to Adonai, your God, in the place where Adonai will choose to have its, his name live. You are not to eat any hummus with it. For seven days you are to eat with the matzah, the bread of affliction. For you came out of the land of Egypt in haste. Thus you remember the day you left the land of Egypt as long as you wish. No weather is to be seen with you anywhere with your territory as for seven days. None of the meat from your sacrifice on the first day and the third day as it should remain all night and good morning. You may say how that place is this place. Uh, next one starts in verse 4. Um, no leaven is to be seen with you anywhere in your territory for seven days. None of the meat from your uh, sacrifices on the first day uh, in the evening is to remain until uh, morning. You may not sacrifice the Pesach offering in just any of the towns that Adonai, your God, is giving you, but at the place where Adonai, your God, will choose to have his name live. There, there, is, where, there is where you are to sacrifice the Pesach offering. In the evening, when the sun sets, at the time of the year that uh, you came out of Egypt, um, you are to roast it and eat it in the place Adonai, your God, will choose. In the morning, you will return and go, go to your tents. For six days, you are to eat the matzah. On the seventh day, there is to be a, fest, a festive assembly for Adonai, your God. Do not do any kind of work. All right. So in verse 9, Nick. And then I'll go ahead and finish up today. Next twelve. You are to count seven weeks. You are to begin counting seven weeks from the time you first put your sickle to the standing ground. You are to observe the festival of Shavuot for Adonai your God with a voluntary offering, which you are to give in accordance with the decree to which Adonai your God has uh, prospered. You are to rejoice in the presence of Adonai your God, you, your sons and daughters, your male and female slaves, the living in living in your town, and the foreigner, orphans and widows living among you, in the place where Adonai your God will choose to have his name live. Remember that you were a slave in Egypt, 
then you will keep and obey these laws. Right. Starting in chapter 16, verses 13 through 17. You are to keep the festival of Sukkot for seven days after you have gathered the produce of your threshing floor and wine press. Rejoice at your festivals, you, your sons and daughters, your male and female slaves, William and the foreigners, orphans and widows living among you. Seven days you are to keep the festival of Anai, your God, and the place of Anai, your God, will choose. Because Anai, your God, will bless you in all your crops and in all your work, so you are to be full of joy. Three times a year, all uh, your men are to appear in the presence of Anai, your God, in the place that you'll choose, at the festival of Matzah, at the festival of Shavuot, and at the festival of Sukkot. They are not to, sh- they are not to show up before Anai empty-handed, but every man is to give what he can in accordance with what things Anai, your God, has given you. Can someone grab me? Oh, there it is. That is the festival reading. And that's largely the reason we're here today. Um, just as a quick reminder for those of us who come in, today is a special holiday reading. Today is Shemini Atzeret. And tonight, tonight we're celebrating some Chattara. So we needed the dance floor available to us. Robert, I think you have a word for us, uh, an article to read to us from FFOZ. And then we, will, um, then we will just go ahead and move on with the rest of our service. In the Torah, the eighth day symbolizes a new beginning. The seventh day brings the Shabbat and the conclusion of the preceding week. After the seven days of Sukkot, the festival concludes with the day to mark the beginning of the new cycle, the mysterious eighth day, Shemini Yatsaret. This day marks the new beginning of the agricultural cycle and the annual Torah reading cycle. <coughs> Considering the eighth day also offers unique insight into priesthoods of Aaron and Yeshua. In Jewish mysticism, the number eight stands outside the cycle of time. The eighth day alludes to the world to come and the resurrection of Yeshua. The seven days of the week symbolize seven ages of history, culminating with the millennial messianic era. The eighth day symbolizes eternity that follows the seven ages of history. The early believers also applied the term eighth day to the day of Yeshua's resurrection because he rose on the day following Shabbat. The use of that terminology connected his resurrection with the eternal glory of the world to come. Aaron and his sons began their priestly ministry on the eighth day after seven days of ordination as per Leviticus 9.1. Similarly, the master's priesthood began on the day after the Shabbat, the day of his resurrection. When we speak of the master's priesthood, we're speaking metaphorically and symbolically. As the writer of the book of Hebrews points out, Yeshua is not truly a priest in the earthly sense of the term. If he were on earth, he would not be a priest at all since there are those who offer the gifts according to the Torah from Hebrews 8, 4. Neither does he serve in an earthly temple. Rather, he serves in the greater reality and his priesthood transcends the earthly. While we speak of him as performing the functions of a priest on our behalf, the images we have in our minds of him applying blood to an altar in heaven are of course merely crude imaginings, primitive symbols of the greater spiritual transactions that occurred with his death, his resurrection, and his ascension. Nevertheless, the sanctuary and the ironic priesthood reflect those heavenly realities. When we study the priesthood's first day of ministry in Parashat Shemini, we find hints about the inauguration of Mashiach into his priestly office. Robert, I'm going to say this. The passage about Yeshua being a Kohen Gadol is one of the most misunderstood passages of Scripture in the entirety of the Scripture. Everyone always thinks he's talking about a new covenant and a new testament. He's not. He's talking about a new sanctuary. A heavenly sanctuary does not negate the function of the earthly sanctuary because the heavenly sanctuary has always existed. 
Likewise, um, uh, it actually predates the uh, first sanctu uh, sanctuary, and it never negated it. Likewise, the rebuilding of the first sanctuary of the of the earthly sanctuary will not negate a heavenly sanctuary. Um, they will serve two different priesthoods side by side. And I just think that's one of the most beautiful nuances of the current covenant. And when you understand that, you realize something: that Messiah Yeshua does not negate Torah. It does not negate Torah. More about that later on. We do not have um, Bill and Carol with us today, so I'm just going to be reading blessings. For Cross Lago Mail, does anyone, has anyone here come back from a long journey, recovered from any kind of illness, um, or any kind of danger, and would like to uh, give the blessing today? No. Okay. Do we have any good news? Let's hear the good news. <laughs> okay. <laughs> what is the good news? They both are doing really well at the school here. Wonderful. Wonderful. Is school here a lot easier, would you say? No? Okay. That's good. <laughs> that's right. That's, that's very good. That's a challenge. Good. Because, well, very often... Tennessee ranks right toward the bottom. But we always beat Mississippi, and that's what counts. <laughs> <laughs> that's true. I have good news. Let's hear the good news. The good weather during Sukkot. Because we ate a meal outside, and I didn't have to sit in the rain. You know, which I would have. I didn't have to. I, we just had beautiful weather. I guess you did. Up in uh, up in uh, Ashland, my sador got all wet and soaked. Because I left it out there in the rain. So I'm glad you do in here in Clarksville. <laughs> Anyone else? You've already had your chance. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Page 108. Page 108. 109. What I'm going to do is I'm going to say the blessing. I'm going to point, and you say the name as we go around. Mishavara Kapatina, Abraham Yitzhak Yitzhak Kol, Sarah Rakhka Rakhel Valeya, Hu Yivare Yirapei Etzah Hale. May the Lord bless the one who bless our ancestors, Abraham Yitzhak Yitzhak Kol, Sarah Rakhka Rakhel Valeya. Bless and heal. Mike. Mike Raphael. Mike Raphael. Rachel, thank you. Me, Francisco. Francisco. Lawrence. Lawrence. Hi. I'll say a few names. Um, Gabriel Yonatan. Uh, Simka Vishamayim. We're still praying for them. Um, and uh, of course, Gabriel. So. Pauline. Pauline. Carol. Carol. Oh, Carol. May the Blessed Holy One give them support, courage, determination, patience, and spirit. Grant them physical and spiritual wholeness. May God in kindness strengthen and heal them sweetly together, body and soul, together with the others who are ill, and let's say, Amen. Amen. Oh God, God heal them sweetly. Speedily. Page 110. Hear their voice of God when they call. Be gracious to them and answer them. Grant them patience, faith, and courage, never let despair overwhelm them. Grant them of your healing power so that vigor of body and mind they may return to their loved ones for a life of blessing and sustenance. Amen. Page 112. Yikada, Dikada, Shame, Rabaha, Mahdi, Rock, your take in the Kopate, the Kaya, Kona, Yomakon, Kaya, the Kobe, Israel, Bahagala, Bahagala, the Sankari, Timuru, Amen. Yahay, Shame, Rabaha, the Rock, Mahaya, Mahaya, Yiparaki, let a law be void of his yard, to use a cut of an apple, but a da amen. Amen. May God's great name be made great and holy in, God, in the world that God created according to God's will. May God establish the divine kingdom soon in our days, quickly and in the near future. Let us say amen. Amen. May God's great name be praised forever and ever. Blessed praise, glorify the race high, honored and elevated be the name of the Holy One, Holy Blessed One, far beyond all blessings. 
and songs, praises and comforts, which people can say and let us say, Amen. Amen. Page 114, Gazette Torah. And um, uh, Anthony, can I ask you to help me with Gazette Torah? Uh, just go ahead and sit there. I will hand you the Torah scroll. And we will ask um, Samantha. We'll ask you to help us dress the Torah scroll today. Bezerta Torah, Asher Samoshe, Livnehe Benehe Yisrael, Ab Yadana Biyad Mahoshe. I'm sorry, I meant uh, you'll have to sit here in the front row. Yeah, the lie, 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 ya la 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 ya la la ya la 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 ya la la ya la 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 ya Actually, can I just hand it off to you? I really take it. Yeah. And the tree of life, for those who are good and those who support their hand, its paths are pleasant and all its ways are peaceful. After our reading today it comes from First Kings chapter eight, beginning in verse fifty-four. Yes, first Kings 58. Or chapter 8, beginning verse 54. Chapter 8. Praise to you, Adonai God, ruler of the universe, who has chosen good prophets and was pleased with their words that were spoken in truth. Praise to you, Adonai, who chooses the Torah and Moses your servant and Israel your people, and the prophets of truth and righteousness. 1 Kings 8, beginning in verse 54. When Shlomo had finished praying all this prayer and pleaded Adonai, he got up, got up from in front of the altar of Adonai, where he had been kneeling with his hands spread out toward heaven. He stood up and raised his voice to bless the whole community of Israel. He said, Bless the Adonai who has given rest to his people Israel in accordance with everything he promised. Not one word has failed of his good promise, which he made through Moshe his servant. May Adonai our God be with us as he was with our ancestors. May he never leave us or abandon us. In this way he will incline our hearts toward him so that we will live according to his ways and observe his mitzvot, laws and rulings which he ordered our fathers to obey. May these words of mine which I have used in my plea before Adonai be present with Adonai our God day and night so that he will uphold the cause of his servant and the cause of his people Israel day by day. Then all the peoples of the earth will know that Adonai is God, there is no other. So be wholehearted with Adonai, our God, living by his laws and observing his mitzvot as you are doing today. Then the king, together with all Israel, offered sacrifices before Adonai. For the sacrifice of peace offerings, which Shlomo offered to Adonai, he offered 22,000 oxen and 120,000 sheep. Thus the king and all the people of Israel dedicated the house of Adonai. The same day, the king consecrated the center of the courtyard in front of the house of Adonai, because he had to offer the burnt offering, the grain offering, and the fat of the peace offerings there. For the bronze altar before Adonai was too small to receive the burnt offering, the grain offering, and the fat of the peace offerings. So Shlomo celebrated the festival at that time. All Israel, a huge gathering that had come all the way from the entrance of Hamat to the body of Egypt, celebrated with him before Adonai our God for seven days, and then for seven more days, fourteen days in all. On the eighth day he sent the people away. They blessed the king and returned to their tents, full of joy and glad of heart for all the goodness Adonai had shown to David his servant 
and to Israel, his people. Praise are you, Adonai, our God, ruler of the universe, rock of all the worlds, righteous in every generation, the faithful God who says it and it is done, who speaks and it is fulfilled. And I have a portion from the New Testament. Robert, why don't you join Nick at the That'll be more natural. I have to say first, this is one of my favorite passages in the entire New Testament. Simeon or Shimon was an old man. Well into his years, he had been promised by God that he would see the Mashiach, the Messiah, before he died. And every day he went to the temple, day after day, week after week, month after month, year after year, he stood in the temple and waited for the Mashiach to appear. And on that day, it was not one of the well-dressed, one of the wealthy couples that came into the, play, into the temple to bless the sac- make the sacrifice. It was a poor peasant and his wife bearing their child wrapped in plain clothes. But the Holy Spirit, the Ruach HaKodesh, told Shimon, this, this couple with the sacrifice of the poor is bringing you your Mashiach. And the old man grasped that child. I have pictured in my mind so many times the look that must have been on his face when he realized that he was looking at his Savior, he was looking at his Messiah. Think about that as we leave the words. This is from Luke's Gospel, reading this morning from the second chapter and reading verses 21 through 32. On the eighth day, when it was time for his to read Nilah, he was given the name Yeshua, which is what the angel had called him before his conception. When the time came for their purification, according to the Torah of Moshe, they took him up to Yerushalayim to present him to Adonai, as it is written in the Torah of Adonai, every firstborn male is to be consecrated to Adonai, and also to offer a sacrifice for a pair of doves or two young pigeons as required by the Torah of Adonai. There was in Yerushalayim a man named Shimon. This man was a Zadik. He was devout. He waited eagerly for God to comfort Israel and the Ruach HaKodesh was upon him. It had been revealed to him by the Ruach HaKodesh that he would not die before he had seen the Mashiach of Adonai. Prompted by the Spirit, he went into the temple courts. And when the parents brought in the child Yeshua to do for him what the Torah required, Shimon took him in his arms, made of our God, God, and said, Now, Adonai, according to your word, your servant is at peace as you let him go. For I have seen with my own eyes your Yeshua, which you prepared in the presence of all peoples, a light that will bring revelation to the Goyim and glory to your people Israel. All God's words are truth and righteousness. You are faithful, Adonai, our God, and your words are trustworthy. Not one word of yours is ever taken back unfulfilled, for you are a dependable and merciful ruler. Praise are you, Adonai the God, who is dependable in all your words. Have mercy on Zion, for she is our life's home. Save the humble soul quickly in our day. Praise are you, Adonai, who causes Zion and her children to rejoice. Cause us to rejoice, Adonai, our God, with the lives of the prophet, your servant, and with the kingdom of David, your anointed. May he quickly come and gladden our hearts. May no stranger sit on his throne, and may no others inherit his glory. For you vowed to him by your holy name, that his light would never be extinguished. Praise are you, Adonai, Shua of David. And for your Torah and for the worship, for the prophets, and for the Shabbat day that you gave us, Adonai, our God, 
for holiness and for rest, for glory and splendor. For all these, Adonai, our God, we thank you and praise you. May your name be praised perpetually forever. Praise for you, Adonai, who sanctifies the Shabbat. Continue on page 121. Page 121 is a prayer if we choose to make it a prayer. Whenever words are before us to repeat, we can either simply repeat or we can pray. And this is a prayer for our country which stands in desperate need of prayer. And I ask you to pray this prayer with me on page 121. Our God and God of our ancestors, please accept with mercy our prayer for our land and its government. Teach our leaders the values of your Torah, Help them understand your rules of righteousness so that our land may never lack peace and tranquility, prosperity, and freedom. I deny that the spirits of all flesh, send your spirit to all the inhabitants of our land and find love and brotherhood, peace and friendship among all the nationalities and faiths who dwell in it. Uproot from their hearts any hatred or enmity, jealousy or rivalry to fulfill the yearnings of your children who delight in its honor and who desire to see it be a light for all the nations. May it be your will that our land will be a blessing to all the inhabitants of the world and that friendship and freedom will reign between them and that the vision of your prophets will soon be fulfilled. Amen. And on page 123, I don't know how many have seen the news. If you have seen the news, you realize that Israel is at war once again. They came under attack last night from Hamas in the Gaza Strip. Between 2,500 and 5,000 rockets have already been fired into Israel. Terrorists have already invaded Israeli space. The IDF is on full alert and war has begun. Israel constantly stands in danger. And today, as always, Israel needs much to be in our prayers. We are to pray for the peace of Jerusalem, the peace of all of Am Israel. And I ask you to pray this prayer with me on page 123. Our heavenly prayer, brother of Israel and his redeemer, bless the state of Israel for the flowering of our redemption. Shield it under your loving wings and spread over it your circle of peace. Send your life and truth to its leaders, ministers, and advisors, and guide them rightly with your good advice. Strengthen the hands of the defenders of our holy land and lead them, God, to deliverance. Crown their efforts with victory, grant peace to the land and eternal happiness to its inhabitants, and let us say, Amen. All right, page 128. We'll go ahead and do the tour procession on this side of the room. <laughs>
strikes on Israel. So let's, uh, let's go ahead and say, oh, say uh, I'm sorry, um, oh, say Shalom. Oh, say Shalom bim Ramah Uya say Shalom Aleinu Ve'yakol Yisrael Ve'yakru Ve'yakru Oh, say Shalom bim Ramah Uya say Shalom Aleinu they are called Israel. Be ru, be ru, amen. Yaha say shalom. Yaha say Shalom Aleinu Ve'yako Yisrael Really mean it? Yaha say Shalom Yaha say Shalom Shalom Aleinu Ve'yako Yisrael Oh say Shalom Bibromah Hu ya say Shalom Aleinu Ve'yako Yisrael Ve'yibru Ve'yibru Amen in the high places, make peace for us and for all Israel, and say Amen. 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 Okay, guys, I know that today's a bit different, and honestly, I like it better. Um, very much how I would prefer praying is actually communal 
It's not someone's up front leading and you're trying to echo the Chazen. That's how Ashkenazim worship. That's, but the Sephardim, it's much more back and forth. I'm not Sephardic, but I sure do appreciate it. Another, another way to put it is, it's not the Sunday church. Don't want to sing too loudly because you might interrupt the guy up front. No, this is family time. Let's all just clobber in and worship together and let's pray together. And it's okay if we pray over the Chazen. Um, because this is family time. Um, and speaking of which, we have some important things to talk about pertaining to the holiday, because I want to make sure that we all understand what we're doing in the holiday season. So what is tonight? Simchat Torah. Simchat Torah, or Simchas Torah, depending on Ashkenazi versus Sephardic dialect. Um, I'm just grabbing, I'm just going to go right grab my Bible. Sorry, I was about to stick my, I was going to start reading, and I thought this is going to be tricky if I don't have one in front of me. Rejoicing in the Torah. You know, it was said to me uh, earlier, maybe a week ago now, somebody said, Quentin, I don't really think I could rejoice in the Sefer Torah. It would be very fake. And you know what? Yeah, I can understand that. I mean... How many of us really get excited about the parchment of the Sefer Torah? Doesn't it, can't it, doesn't, isn't there room just to be artificiality? Are we really excited about the Torah? No. Well, at least you're honest. <laughs> Too bad. Because when we rejoice in Torah, I want to put a different word in us. It's not that you're dancing the tango with a Torah scroll. I, get that, those weird pictures out of your head. What we are doing is we are showing our utter zeal for the Torah. Zeal. I know I taught on zeal like for four weeks, like last year. But I want us to think about authentic zeal for Hashem. What does it mean to have passionate fervor? I'm going to say something before we get into it today, and I hope this is not true of us. But in my personal opinion, the Messianic Jews that I have been in interaction with in my life, for the most part, lack a zeal for the Torah. They lack a zeal for the Torah. They lack a zeal for the traditions of our fathers. They lack a zeal for Israel. They, lack, they, have, they have a lack of zeal for the Messiah Yeshua and how he interacts with the Torah. We, and I think part of it is because we're not really comfortable with authentic Jewish Torah-based living. What we prefer is what boils down to is a kind of a Christian experience with a Jewish icing. Many, many Messianic Jewish congregations in our area are just a Jewish icing. And it's not authentically Jewish. It's not authentically Torah. And very often, the people who do get a zeal for Torah, they lose track of the nation of Israel. But they don't understand. Without Israel, there is no Torah. I'm sorry, without Torah, there is no Israel. But without Israel, there is no Torah. And they lose an actual authentic um, desire for the Jewish community. They don't care about actual Jews, about the actual nation of Israel. But I've got news for you. The Torah was given to the nation of Israel. The Torah was given to the nation of Israel. And Hashem was on the mountain and he handed the Torah to Moshe and the 70 elders and he said, go figure it out. And when you announce the holidays, those are the holidays. When you announce Shabbos, that's Shabbos. Shabbat. You see, he gave it to them and said, figure it out. And the 70 elders, they would have discussions and Moshe would teach them. And they would really sit down and hammer out, what is this thing all about? How do we observe truly? And sometimes the elders got it disastrously wrong and it had to be recorrected in later generations. 
but we have always, always had a relationship with Torah. So I'll say this again. Without Israel, there, I'm sorry, without Torah, there is no Israel. What makes us unique is Torah. But without Israel, there is no Torah. And what I'm referring to here is the Hebrew roots world. They gain a fervor for, uh, for Torah, but they completely disregard the sages. They disregard the actual study. And I'll say this, and this is true of myself too. Most Messianic Jews have a very superficial knowledge of Torah. Why? Because we rely on English. But Torah was given to us in the original language of Hebrew for a reason. It is true Torah. And so we should be desiring to learn Hebrew. Now, if we don't know Hebrew like we have here, then we have to work with translations. Um, and I confess it's the second best option. But part of the news of Mashiach is that when Mashiach comes back, he says he will purify our tongues. Mm. He'll give us a pure language. And I believe that we will study, we, we will all know true biblical Hebrew. Uh, it will be our first language, or maybe our second, but we will know it perfectly. But I say all this to set the stage for, on one hand, you have kind of a contemporary evangelical form of Messianic Judaism. On the other hand, you have Hebrew roots. And I've been living between the spectrum of Torah doesn't really matter. Let's just have fun and sing our contemporary worship songs and let's dance. And then over here, Torah is very serious, but let's disregard the nation of Israel. And we, every man gets to decide for himself what it means. And both of these camps, what is wrong with them is they lack zeal. Zeal for Torah, zeal for Messiah Yeshua, and over here, it's still a lack of zeal for Torah and still a lack of zeal for Messiah Yeshua because they are not attempting to replicate his way of life. We lack zeal. And what I'm going to talk about more so today is that evangelical camp. Because that's what I'm more used to. I've seen a lot more of it. And it's, as I said, it's not authentic Torah life. It is Christianity, Sunday Christianity, with a Jewish icing. Now, there is nothing wrong, I want to say this straight up front, with Sunday Christianity. In fact, we support two churches here. We give them a very low rent when we say use our facilities because we want everyone to be able to worship Hashem. And we recognize Sunday Christianity as an authentic Messiah-based religion. Just keep it about Messiah and you'll be fine. But understand that Sunday Christianity is not the religion that was handed down to us at the mountain. It was handed down at the cross to all the nations. But the religion of Messianic Judaism goes back to Mount Sinai. And Messiah Yeshua reaffirmed it all throughout his life. We see this in John chapter 2. John chapter 2, I'll just tell you what happens. Messiah Yeshua goes into the temple and he starts clearing up the temple. And he says, my father's house shall be called a house of prayer for all nations, but you have made it a den of robbers. Now here's what people don't understand. It was actually illegal to be selling anything in the temple courts. That's not Torah, that's not Sola Scriptura, that is just Pharisaic law. They said, when you enter the temple, you are not allowed to sell. So here Messiah Yeshua comes in and he says, they're breaking the rules. And he clears out the temple courts. It says, zeal for my house consumes me. Zeal for your house consumes me. He was defined by his zeal for his faith and for his God. Do we have zeal? Or what about Acts 21, where Paul goes to visit the original Messianic Jewish congregation in Jerusalem. And it says that the people are very upset because they hear he teaches against the traditions. And so he has to show that he does support the traditions and the law. And so he goes to the temple and offers a sacrifice. And he shaves his head and he pays the thing. But the way it describes that congregation is they are zealous for the Torah. Guys, I've got news for you. Hashem gave us a perfect law on the mountain. And he said, figure it out. David Melech, David, our, uh, the, the, the king of Jerusalem, how did he react to the Aaron Kodesh when it entered Jerusalem? He danced. That's zeal. That's fervor. That's 
not allowed in Karim Hashem, apparently. But no, you understand. <laughs> There's a reason for that. It's because Messianics have made dance silly, uh, in my experience. Um, but he danced because he was excited. Let me ask you this. Was David excited and zealous for Torah or for the presence of God? You want to say the presence of God. Let me tell you, in the case of David Melech, you couldn't have one without the other. You couldn't have one without the other. So the other is both. God does not manifest where his words are not being honored. God said, you want my presence in the nation? You want my presence to make you a special and unique people? Then here's the Torah. Go keep it. And so Melech, David Melech, our king, he knew that when he brought the Torah in, the Aram Kodesh in, which had a Torah scroll in it, round up just one time around, he knew that he was welcoming the presence of God. Guys, that's why we read scripture here just so much. I would rather have scripture than a band. I would rather have scripture than contemporary worship. I would rather have scripture than so many of the things that have come to decorate our services. Why? Because with the reading of scripture, God also comes in with presence. Yesterday, there were three of us here for Hashanah Rabbah. Three of us. Ina, my mother, and myself. I guess you could say Ina, Ima, and myself. That's funny, guys. You should laugh. Um, Ima means mother. Um, um, Ina, my mother, and myself, and the presence of God fell on the building. We just read the liturgies. I know. They were prayer and they were scripture. And we sang Hosanna as we beat the Bema with lulavs. And then we replicated rain by beating against the ground. And do you know what? The presence of God, it seems like a strange tradition to us, but the presence of God came. And then I believe very strongly the presence of God came last night during the reading of the Amidah. Uh, but what is Kabbalah Shabbat? What is Ma'arif? It's prayer and it's scripture. We understand that when we read scripture and we honor scripture, God's presence comes down. And he knew that the Torah was the mark of God's future rule over the earth. What do I mean by this? Well, we just sang it when we opened up the Aaron Kodesh here. The word shall go forth from Zion, and the word of the Lord from Jerusalem. Blessed is he who in his holiness gave the Torah. Um, I'm sorry, Baruch, Shenatan, Torah, Torah, Torah. Blessed is he, the giver of the Torah. So understand that in the reign of Messiah Yeshua, the Torah will be perfectly kept in Israel, in Jerusalem. And finally, there will be one place on earth where Torah is kept perfectly. And then all the Gentile nations are going up to Jerusalem. And there's going to be a cloud over Jerusalem. The Shekinah glory of God will again reign over Jerusalem because Messiah Yeshua is there. Again, Messiah Yeshua brings the law. He brings the presence of God. Messiah Yeshua will reign from Jerusalem. All the Gentile nations are going up. They're going to observe Sukkot, which we just finished celebrating. And they're going to bring Torah back down to the nations. They're going to receive instruction from him. And they're going to bring it back down. Scripture says that the Lord himself, the Lord himself will teach us. Messiah Yeshua brings the very presence of God. And we see that in the Elenu. Every knee will bow. All the idols will be cast aside. It's singing about the era that is coming. And Torah will spread. My question to you is, is that not worth being excited about? You might say to yourself, Quentin, this sounds a lot like Hebrew roots. No, no, it's not. Hebrew Roots has a disregard for Israel. Hebrew Roots has a disregard for the teachings of the sages. Hebrew Roots has a disregard for how it's been kept for the last 3,000 years. We don't disregard any of that. We also don't condemn Sunday Christianity or Gentiles who choose not to observe the ceremonial laws because we recognize that only Jews are required to keep those. However, we also believe that Gentiles are welcome to keep the laws. And so once again, the Sunday churches have decided not to join us for our ceremonies and our holidays, even though they're invited. And that's their choice. 
I hope one day they come, though, and they get to enjoy fellowship with us during these things. And together, Jew and Gentile combined, we can be a picture of the era that's coming. That's my hope. So it's not, the ceremonial law is not incumbent upon Gentiles, but it is absolutely welcomed. And I would say it is incumbent upon the Jew, as is the moral law as well. And let me tell you this right now. That's worth getting excited about, the Torah. Let me tell you this. I have seen in this congregation zeal. And just last night, I started thinking about all the people I've seen who come by who have zeal for the Torah and for Messiah Yeshua. I mentioned Nick and Karen, Gabrielle, Jimmy, who is here three times a week, one, two, three, four times a week, praying with us. Ina, who has been here learning constantly. Dan and Rick, they come during the week. Tammy, Janelle, Pauline, who's helped decorate so much. Oh, well, Cricket, who has gone to a Messianic Shiva and learned so much of the teachings of the sages. Bill, Carol, who are here constantly on Shabbat. Let me give you another one. Uh, Robert, I, I can't name them all. Shannon and Laura, who are here like constantly. And we're always praying together. And we're always singing the voice of the Lord. I'll give you my personal favorite. I know you're watching. Uh, Greg, a year ago, he was a Mormon. A year ago, he came here talking nonstop about Joseph Smith. Within the course of a year, he gave up Mormonism. He embraced Messianic Judaism. He bought to tefillin. He prayed with us every single day, or like five times a week the Shachari prayers, he learned the Hebrew as best he could, and he signed up for a Messianic Jewish yeshiva. And now, he has a Facebook identity, the Nomadic Messianic. And, and he posts all the time teachings and things he's learning and reading. My word, that's zeal. What about Simcha? Who, I, when I thought, when she first started coming here, I thought she didn't enjoy this place. And next thing I know, she's my cousin. And she's leading all the worship. And now, when she moves away, where she got a hold of some of our teaching, she's Friday nights, she spends Friday nights at the Chabad Center with real Jewish community. Then on Saturday morning, she goes to the Messianic Jewish community. That's zeal for the house of Israel. That's zeal for Torah. I have seen so much zeal here, I wish I could keep it. But I feel like sometimes people who are most zealous slip through our fingers. Well, we've talked about this. <laughs> Greg and Simcha, I'm talking about you two in particular right now. <laughs> <laughs> and I'll say this, in this congregation I've seen zeal, and I've seen fervor, and I've seen excitement. But I've also seen the opposite. I've seen apathy. For everybody who has shown this zeal, this unadulterated zeal, I have seen 10 people come by, apathetically look around and say, it's not what I wanted it to be. They show up for a few months, or maybe they're very excited, and then they fade out and they never come back. I've also seen apathy. I've got news for you. Hashem hates apathy. Because when we take his people not seriously, and we take the reading of Torah not seriously, and when we take the, our, our religion, our prayer time not seriously, it's not the prayer time we're not taking seriously. It's not Torah we're not taking seriously. It's him we don't take seriously. And so my number one question to you is this, how do we gain zeal? I have one answer for you. Do something. The only way to get zeal for prayer is to spend time in prayer. The only way to be zealous for scripture is to get to scripture. And I know what it's like. The first time you pray a shock great prayer, it takes like two hours. You're, you're like this and you think to yourself, I can't do this again. And then once you're in the rhythm and something takes 45 minutes and it's pretty darn simple, suddenly you're like, I can't go a morning without it. Once you get into the habit of scripture reading, you can't go without scripture. Once you have the habit of falling into the presence, you cannot get out of the presence. You always want to be in it. And so, like, it's, and here's the key word. The action has to be continuous. That is the definition of zeal and fervor. Let me ask you this. What happens, what, what, what's the difference between zeal and excitement? Zeal goes through a hard time. Zeal goes through seasons of boredom. Excitement dies at a season of boredom. 
or when there's pushback. Scripture talks about this. Plants without root, they spring up quickly, the sun comes up, and they wither. Or there's thorns, and they're choked out. So let me ask you this. I have been pouring my heart and soul into this congregation for about three years now. That's not true. Well, as a full-time leader, that's true. It's really about six years. Three to six years, give or take. Let me ask you this. How has this congregation changed your life at home? Do you pray more? Do you read scripture more? Do you observe Torah more? Do you have a heart for Israel more? Because I'll tell you the truth, I almost quit this summer. Yeah, I almost did. Because I feel like I pray constantly for things and I just don't see them manifesting. Or I'll see them manifest for a moment and then they're gone. And the one thing I've pushed into again and again is Messianic community. We need to be praying together. We need to be fellowshipping in each other's homes. And I seriously almost just disparaged out of here. But I said, no, it's not worth it. Hashem has called me here, so I'm here. I want you to be serious. Do we have zeal for Hashem? Do we have zeal for Torah? Do we have zeal for Scripture? Do we have zeal for Son Messiah Yeshua? Do we have zeal? I'm not even saying yes. If, if, listen, if you're not Messianic, Messianic Jew, Messianic Gentile, I don't. If you're not Messianic, I don't. I, then do you just have zeal for God? Do you have zeal for Bible reading and for prayers? Do you have zeal for Sunday Christianity? If you are Messianic, do you have zeal for Messianic Judaism? Do you have zeal for Messiah Yeshua? Because that zeal is a passionate love song to Hashem. God wants passionate love songs. He doesn't want watered down weak believers. And so I wrote a list here of things that show zeal, just ideas for catching that fire. Do we keep commandments? Do we pray the Avinu Shiva Shemaim, the Lord's Prayer? Do we, have we connected with the Jewish community? Have we tried to train and disciple and teach others? Have we gone to the public functions for our congregation? Like when we, when we go to Austin P and we, we have a, a booth there and we, we're handing out things saying, come, give us a try. Maybe you want to lead a Torah club. Have you been to a Torah club? Why don't you invite friends over for Kiddush or Havdalah or Kiddush Lavana? These are great ways of forming community and of worshiping in each other's homes. Meet me. I love to meet people during the week. There are days where I come here and I meet people from beginning of the day to the end of the day, and all we do is I mentor and I train and I teach. Let's do a Hebrew lesson right now. Okay, let's do a prayer time together right now. It's wonderful. Are we, but, so I'm, I'm an open resource. Meet me. Do we participate in daily prayers? Do we read from us the door? Have we studied Hebrew? Have we decided to get an education? I've mentioned Greg and Cricket, who signed up for Yeshiva. Many Messianic Jews, they're just Jewish rabbis even, they're just pastors who put on a prayer shawl and learn the Shema. That's really bad. That's really bad. And here's another question. Do you study the sages and the illuminaries of the Messianic Jewish faith? There's a reason we put them on our foyer wall, because they're very, very pious. They are the reason that we are here today. If it wasn't for Lichtenstein, we wouldn't be here today. If it wasn't, well, actually, if it wasn't for the second Lichtenstein, we wouldn't be here today. There's so much heritage here. Have we said their words? Do we know what they said about Israel? Do we know what they said about Torah? Do they know what they said about Messiah Yeshua? And here's my challenge to you. Start doing. What is our greatest form of worship? It's our deeds. It's not our worship songs. It's our deeds. And it's not the deeds. It's not the Torah. It is the Torah. It's God himself who gave us the Torah. When we choose to get excited about Torah, we get excited about him. So my charge to you today for Timkat Torah, for those of you who are coming, is choose to be excited. Have zeal for him by doing. We choose to get excited. Next year, I want to see more people 
doing the things of Torah. I would see more people praying. I would see more people reaching out into the community. I would see more good deeds. I would see more feeding the homeless, like Tammy does on Saturday morning. I want to see more reaching out. Carol said the reason we don't study and pray that much, she said, is because we have televisions. I'll tell her what I told you. Or I'll tell you what I told her. I said, throw away the TV. I said, the TV mm -hmm. gets in the way of your prayer. Throw it out. Amen. Mm -hmm. And I say, come to Simchat Torah and rejoice. Knowing that we that this Torah will spread throughout the earth because of the reign of Messiah Yeshua. So when I hold the Torah scroll, not only am I rejoicing the perfect word that God gave Israel in these animal skins, but I'm also rejoicing in the future reign of Messiah Yeshua on the earth. And this law that I am holding now in my in, in Simchat Torah, this law will spread throughout the earth as a sign of his dominion. It will spread as a sign of his dominion. And I'm going to end with something shocking today, but I'll say it. The promise of the prophets was that the Torah would spread throughout the whole earth, that Messiah Yeshua, that the Messiah would purge the earth of idols, he would purge it of all false doctrine, he would purge it of all wickedness, and Torah would be spread from Jerusalem to the nations. And so a gospel that teaches us not to obey the words of Torah, or how about this? A gospel without Torah is not a true gospel. You can get the, Torah, the gospel without Torah. Kind of. Kind of. Um, you, you need a knowledge of sin. You need a knowledge of what sin does to our relationship with God. But understand this. That it's not full or complete. Because I have to know that when I accept Messiah Yeshua, not only am I receiving forgiveness for my sins, but I'm also putting myself under his dominion. And that the fullness of the gospel isn't that I get to go to heaven, but that he's coming back to earth to establish his rule and reign on the earth. That's what it means, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And so understand, understand that the fullness and the completion of the gospel is here when Messiah Yeshua sits on a throne on earth, not in heaven, on earth, with a crown on his head. And in his hand, he has an iron scepter. And everyone who opposes him, smashed to pieces. That's the ending of the story. And it's going to be glorious. And it's going to be wonderful. When I hold Torah, I hold a just a token of the promise of the era that is coming. So if you are taught a salvation without the lordship and the dominion and the kingship of Jesus Christ, Yeshua Mashiach, you did not learn a biblical gospel. It would be completely de disattached from the prophets and the apostles. It's shocking words. It's shocking words. I'm being shocking today. I like to talk about relationship, but today I want to ask you this question. Where is your zeal? Where is your fervor? Many of you, I can look at you and I see your zeal and your fervor in how you live your lives. Indeed, I think that some of my more zealous crowd is here today. And that's good. It shows itself through actions. Now my charge to you is to choose zeal through actions. And know that when we choose actions, when we choose zeal, we are choosing God. When we choose his words, we choose him. That's not how we're used to how we were used to thinking. That's definitely not how the story of Messiah Yeshua is presented to me. And yet I believe that when he sits on the, th the throne and he I come before him, what he's gonna want is an accounting, a ledger of my behavior. And based on that behavior, he's gonna say, Well done, good and faithful servant, enter into the into the kingdom. Or he's gonna say, You really, really wasted every single thing I've given you. And you might say that's legalism or that's works. Well, maybe it is, but it's kind of what he says in the Gospels. A lot. There's a lot of servants who are thrown out hand and foot in the Gospels because they just didn't do anything. He gave them a coin and they buried it. Or he gave them a job and they misused it. Or he came back and they weren't ready. They were asleep. I'm not even saying choose actions. I'm just saying choose zeal for him. 
and let me see evidence of your zeal, even if it's in your prayer life. It's the time you spend with him. Choose fervor. Choose the passionate love story. Don't be that passive person who just, like Snow White, who just sleeps and then her husband comes and she's like, oh, good. Be someone who's actually passionately living for the lover that is coming. I'm not saying this is a means of earning salvation, but I am saying it is our method of worshiping and living for him. Yeah, I feel the same way. <laughs> Let's go ahead and finish up. And I want you to think about it. How has this last year been? And have we lived zealously for our God? Or have we lived passively? I don't know. Let's see. Page 162. Thank you, love, thank you, 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 Page one Let's go ahead and say it for this one. And so we hope in the end in our God, soon to see the glory here by moving idols from the earth and banishing false gods, fixing the brokenness of the world so that it will be God's kingdom. All humanity will call on your name, and all the wicked of the earth will turn toward you. All those who live in the world will know and understand that every knee must bend to you, and every tongue must promise loyalty. They will bow to you, and I, your God, uh, honoring the glory of your name. All will accept your authority, and the time will come soon when you will rule over them forever and ever. For the kingdom is your the world is your kingdom, and you will always rule over it in glory. As it's written in your Torah, the Lord shall rule forever and ever. And the prophet Zechariah said, May God will be rule over all the earth on that day, God will be one as God saying one. Page 168. Is anyone here mourning the loss of a loved one somewhere in the last 11 months, or is it coming up on a one-year anniversary? You can stand up. Two people. What if you can uh, just? What if you say the uh, later? More to each. I'm sorry. 
May God's great name be made and great more in the world that God created according to God's will. May God establish his divine kingdom soon in our days, quickly and in the near future, and let us say, Amen. 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 May God's great name be great and great more in Blessed, praised, glorified, and raised high, honored, elevated by the name of the Holy Blessed One, far beyond all blessings and songs. Praises and comforts which people can say, and let us say, Amen. 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 May there be abundant peace from heaven and life for us and for all Israel, let us say, Amen. Amen. May the one who makes peace in the high heavens make peace for us and all Israel, and let us say, Amen. 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 Well, let's go ahead today as we dismiss. Let's sing that song we skipped earlier today, Yeshua Hamashiach. May God His grace and peace. Shiva Tov. Yeshua HaMashiach Adonai Yeshua HaMashiach Adonai Yeshua HaMashiach Yeshua HaMashiach Yeshua HaMashiach Adonai Ben David Melech Israel. Ben David Melech Israel. Ben David Melech Israel. Ben David Melech. Ben David Melech. Ben David Melech Israel. God is grace and peace. You're dismissed. Oh, and if you will not be here tonight, we have our calendars in, so please come by and grab the one that you want.